Okay, just to continue on, this is basically what the tutorial is calling for us to do, but I just took a moment to create the two controllers for the web API. There's really not much in the way of a change to make here. Let me just draw your attention to the fact that we have API controllers instead of just controller, which was the class we inherited from when we were doing MVC, right? So it's just a slight variation on that. Uh, as we go down through, instead of action results, uh, what we'll typically see, of course, this was also I checked off to do asynchronous uh, calls and, and functions. So we are still getting HTTP action results, right? Um, if they're all set up as asynchronous tasks. But we have things like get book, get books, which returns all the books, get book where we pass an ID to return the one and so on and so forth. Now, one of the things that's nice about Web API is it does do some automatic documentation that it generates for us. And if I actually bring this up, say, in a browser here, I chose Chrome on purpose because <laughs> some browsers, when we actually get to uh, calling Web API calls, uh, they handle the JSON differently to get returned. So Google and I think Firefox or is it Opera also, both will just give you a nice JSON listing. Uh, so that's why I chose. Opera and Chrome use the same uh, letters. What's that? Opera and Chrome use the same letters. Ah, there you go. All right. So for one thing, you can click on API here and get some documentation. Now, of course, this wasn't in the uh, tutorial example because he didn't set up the account controller. It was already there for us. So all the things about maintaining users and passwords and so on, that's already there generated. So here's our actual books API then. So I can just go API slash books. Now all this does is it gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. It doesn't actually access the data. Clicking, these are just documentation links basically. But all I have to do is come up here, and API slash books, for example. And I can see, okay, this is using XML. By the way, why is it XML instead of JSON? Anyone know? It's just the, it gives you whatever you ask for. So the browser is defaulting to a request for XML, right? Uh, that's why I'm getting XML as opposed to JSON. Uh, but if you specify a request that you want JSON, you'll get JSON, right? So, of course, when you're doing your own client-side code, you're asking for JSON usually. But, you know, it's kind of six of one and a half dozen the other. JSON is much less verbose, so it takes a lot fewer bytes of data to carry the same information in a JSON format. And that's kind of become the default or standard approach these days rather than XML. XML is just very wordy, like you have price slash price, right? So you're almost doubling the amount of markup that's needed just to describe the data itself, book slash book and so on and so forth. But you see we're get, basically getting the data and all the other API calls work pretty much the same. It's all RESTful in the sense that it's really just a URL is all that it takes. If I want one particular book, right, just as we remember from MVC uh, with the route mapping, okay, we can just then specify an ID number. So uh, book ID three should be David Copperfield, I think. There we go. Okay. So just to give you an idea of how the API looks and works here. But of course, that's nowhere near as much fun as we're going to have in a minute when we actually create a client application. So, you know, you can actually, anything can be a client application for this. We could do a, a, a console program, right? That would just create, have an HTTP client and make those same calls and get the data and regurgitate it out in the console window if you wanted to, right? There's all different ways you can access a web API. Uh, the tutorial takes us through. I think what I'll do is I have the finished product <laughs> in uh, Visual Studio here. So rather than make you go through and watch me uh, do it all manually, we'll bring up the code and I'll kind of walk you through it a little bit. Okay, so what he has us do is come into the actual index view of the home page, right, which as we saw a moment ago was the standard boilerplate, you know, Jumbotron, ASP.NET, learn more about it here, here, and here, right? We just took that out and we basically put in uh, 
a basic HTML page here, right? But to use Knockout, one of the interesting and useful things we're doing here is we're actually uh, using binding, right? Um, you see there's various data binding expressions and that's calling the knockout library. So here's a for each loop. So where we can loop through as we build this unordered list and loop through the entire books collection, right? And here we're data binding that this span will be uh, the author name, etc. cetera. Uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> I just was quickly playing around with his tutorial. I threw in a link for delete. He doesn't have that in there. That's the one thing I asked for in the lab is you should actually delete books as well, right? So just a data bind here for a click event. So you can data bind to events, you can data bind to actual text properties, et cetera, of the view model. Now where is the view model? Well, that's all handled in the knockout JavaScript itself, right? Which if you're familiar and comfortable at all with uh, jQuery, you'll find looks pretty darn familiar, right? So for people with a jQuery background or exposure, Knockout is pretty easy to get to. Angular is just a little bit cleaner even than Knockout. Um, so this works basically because one of the bundles that I'm rendering here is simply called app, right? This, that's just straight following the tutorial. There's nothing different about my example here except I added the delete functionality. But uh, <coughs> in the actual app start, you have your bundle config, which is our bundling and minification system we use in MVC. Here it is again. Okay, so it's supported in all ASP.NET stuff nowadays. So I just added my app bundle that includes the latest version of Knockout that I happen to have. To get Knockout in place, the tutorial just had you go in and do one of those install package commands in Package Manager Console. Install package Knockout JS, and there you go. It just installs all the uh, JavaScript and so on for Knockout, which we will see over here, not surprisingly, under scripts, right? Is there a way to make uh, NuGet automatically add that bundle? Like, an, a, is there another extra like, command line to do, like an extra attribute? Well, uh, if you start with a template that doesn't have it, then you have to add it uh, with NuGet, either with the Package Manager console, or you can actually do it interactively, right? Okay. <coughs> you can come down to the NuGet Package Manager, and manage packages for solution. And the ones that aren't in here, you can just search for and add through the interactive dialog box instead. And does that automatically save it to the bundle though? Mm -hmm. No, okay. no. Right. Actually, it, depending on how they wrote the uh, NuGet package, it might. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's possible you can do that as part of the package installation. Um, but we're bundling not just Knockout, but we're also bundling, this is our own code that we wrote here for the app, right? So that's really where much of the action happens then. If I come back down to scripts, so the tutorial has you actually create this. Now you do it in stages, right? Uh, but basically, uh, it uses a view model, okay? The very last line of code really should probably be in a document ready, but basically, uh, by the time you get here, the document's ready. So it just applies bindings on the view model. So all those binding expressions in the HTML, this is the line of code that actually links all of those to the, if you want to think of this as almost like the code behind page type of thing in our previous work. That's kind of the closest similarity. So how Knockout works is you have observable objects, right? If you want a collection of items, then you'll create an observable array. If you just need one, then you just need an observable. So the KO obviously stands out for knockout, right? Anything bound to a knockout observable automatically gets updated in the actual view, in the HTML page, if any changes happen to the uh, objects in JavaScript themselves. So as soon as you say uh, were to retrieve a new book, Right? or you made an edit on a book and you'll get the newest copy, it senses a change in that element of this observable array and it will immediately update, without you writing any additional code, it'll update it in the actual HTML of the page itself. So that's how it works, is by being observable, it means that any, it's like binding in any other tool you've used where you've used data binding, 
right? Think back to a grid view control and a object data source where as soon as the objects are updated, the uh, new version of the object is displayed in your grid view or details view or form view or whatever you were doing there. Same with Windows forms and so on. Binding, it's a pretty common concept in many platforms today. So a new book here is for adding a new book to the system, right? So we have all of our different components that make up the book object. So you'll see a lot of parallels. Basically, the classes that we wrote in C Sharp, many of them will get actually uh, parallel classes written more or less in JavaScript uh, written as part of your view model, right? So that is one of the things that's a bit of a headache with uh, these applications is there's nothing that in most cases automatically revises, say, the design of a class defined in your JavaScript view model based on changes to your actual C Sharp view model. Of course, they might be on different planets as far as the system is concerned, so it's pretty hard to expect that to happen automatically. So that's one of the things that you have to do as a developer. Okay, so we do define a couple of uh, URIs basically to correspond to the calls for our web API, right? So API books, API authors, and away you go. And then we just use basically this is quite similar to jQuery, so we just define some a an Ajax helper, right? So we can specify as a, as an argument here whether we're looking for what particular HTTP verb, right? Are we doing a put? Are we doing a post? Are we doing a get? And so on and so forth, right? And which URI we're using, and so on and so forth. And we ask specifically for JSON, which is why this will get JSON data being returned. So, so here's a simple function to get all books, calling our helper class, okay? Where we pass the books URI, it's a get, and basically when it's done, self is referring to the HTML page like a this. I think, in fact, it's defined as this at the top. This.books, well, that's the uh, uh, books collection, the observable array, and we just pass the data to it. And because the fields match up, it, um, it's like our model binders we've used in ASP, okay? So it just will bind all the data coming in the JSON file to the matching properties of the book objects in the observable array. And our get book detail then is where we pass a get but with a specific item ID added onto the URI, right? So we get the one book that we're after. Delete book, oh, I shouldn't have showed you this because that's something I asked you to do on your own. <laughs> but you can see the idea there as well. And get authors just returns all the authors. The main reason we need that for this interface is for a drop-down list. So when you're adding a new book, we can provide a drop-down list of authors to choose from, okay? So our add book function looks after inserting, okay? So we just uh, pull the different elements out of the binding arrangement that we have in the HTML with the little form that we show, and we just assign uh, into this new uh, book, the various uh, properties that we're getting from the user input, and then we do a post. Okay, post is used for inserting new records, and uh, that's basically it, right? At the end, after defining all that, we actually call get all books and get authors to get all the initial data to appear in the form. So it's the way this is written in combination with the binding expressions that you find in the HTML of the page give you in the end the overall effect that you're after here. I went to a dark, dark theme in Edge. I think you made me do that the other day. <laughs> I've joined the dark side. Okay. Now it is all asynchronous, right? So it takes it a moment. Up. Ah, uh, probably I'd never built since I got over here. I might not have uh, generated the database. I'm not quite sure which. Hang on a second. Okay, just to wrap up then. Oh, sorry, I'm muted there. Uh, yeah, I got a database conflict because I had two projects both running at the same time with the same connection string to identically named databases. <laughs> anyway, so I just had to close the one Visual Studio and I was fine. So here is what we're basically seeing. So this is a... <coughs> As the SPA approach would have it, this page just sits there, does all its communication with the web API calls in the background. So you can click on details. The details section, you notice there was that 
a little bit of knock out there that uh, although it was seems like it was commented out, it was still fully functional in terms of whether or not to show the details section of the page. So I can see details of individual books and uh, I can delete books out of the list or I can add books here. I can't add authors because this page is just set up for books here. So Charles Dickens, he wrote uh, there and back again. No, he didn't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 1777. Genre. Fiction. Fiction. And away we go. $1,000. And it shows up right away. So it's all being done through Web API calls. Knockout is just looking after basically asking the Web API interface to uh, do its thing and then refreshing through the data binding in the HTML itself immediately with its own localized collection that it's maintaining in memory in the browser of the books that we're seeing. So it's a, well, kind of a neat example uh, to work with. So feel free to implement uh, the uh, doctor-patient example on the same basic layout or, you know, there's uh, dozens of other tutorials out there on Web API with different uh, spa templates and so on, whether you want to use Angular or a different approach, feel free. But this kind of just shows the minimum level I'm expecting for the lab. Any questions about that? <laughs>